When I'm in my classroom, I'm, I like to find demonstrations that I can use throughout the curriculum that can be applied in more than one chapter in the textbook for more than one topic. And this demonstration fits the bill. I could use it four or five times throughout my curriculum. I'm starting with some distilled deionized water. And what I'm going to do is add a common household chemical. You can buy it at the grocery store. I'd pick up a bottle of Philips Milk of Magnesia. The active ingredient that I'm interested in is magnesium hydroxide. And so I'm going to take, I've got some water here on the string plate, and I'm going to start by just putting in a couple of milliliters of the magnesium hydroxide. Now, before I do anything else to it, I want to point out one of the nice features of this suspension. One of the topics I would be addressing in my classroom is the fact that this is a type of mixture. The mixture is not going to be a true suspension where the particles will settle out because of the particles being large in size. They're not going to settle out due to gravity here. Instead, I do not have a suspension and I don't have a solution where the particles are very small, so small that I wouldn't be able to see them if it were a true solution. What I have would be called a colloidal suspension. The particles are medium in size between the particles in a suspension and the particles in a solution. And you can test this. It's called a Tyndall effect. Just taking a flashlight and a sheet of black paper, if I look, you can see that as the light passes through the solution, through the colloidal suspension actually, the beam of light is being bent and the light does not shine through onto the black paper. The beam of light is being bounced around inside the beaker. So this is an example of a Tyndall effect, which I'm going to come back to in a little bit. Now, I want to be able to see what's going on in here. I know that magnesium hydroxide is a base. Hydroxides are bases. And I like to use the periodic table as often as possible. So I can bring this up in periodicity. I'm going to step over to our periodic table here. And I always like my students to know that if they're on this side of the periodic table, in the first family with the alkali metals, or the second family, the alkaline earth metals, these are where we find our good bases. Strong bases, lithium, sodium, potassium hydroxide, found in the first family. I consider calcium, strontium, and barium hydroxide to be moderate bases. Many times we discuss them in our classroom as being strong bases. But magnesium hydroxide, hmm, what about magnesium hydroxide? Going back to the beaker, it's not very soluble. Only about nine thousandths of a gram would dissolve in a liter of water. And so there's not a lot of solubility for that base. And when we dissolve it, we don't form as many hydroxide ions as we would in similar amounts, if we were dissolving similar amounts of a stronger base. We can test that. We're going to add some universal indicator. And what we find is that the color that we have here will not be as dark as if we were adding sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. I like a couple of good squirts here to give me a nice vivid color. I think that's good. And you can see that what we have here is probably something about a pH of 10. If you'll look at the universal indicator chart here, when we have this shade of purple, we're looking at a pH of about 10. If this were sodium hydroxide, we would expect something more towards 12, 13 for a pH. So we're starting off with a pH of 10. And what is the purpose for our Philips Mac Milk of Magnesia? We use it as an acid base, well, not an indicator. We use it to neutralize acids when we have acid indigestion. So, since I have the magnesium hydroxide here, I'm going to do the reverse reaction. I'm going to take and add 3 molar 
hydrochloric acid. Now, here I'm going to be examining acid-base chemistry using an indicator and changes in pH. Let's see what happens when I've really had a bad tummy ache due to the terrible meal I had last night. I've got some acid indigestion and here comes the culprit. Just a couple of drops of 3 molar hydrochloric acid and you see what happens. An initial red indicating a very high pH. Let's go back to the indicator color chart. We saw a flash of red and then we went through the color changes from the red pH around 4, maybe a little orange that we would see with a pH of 5. Then we saw going into the yellows and the greens and we'll notice that at this point we're probably somewhere between a pH of 8 and 9 perhaps. It's got a nice blue color and if we were to let this continue to stir, what would happen is we would go back to a deeper color, more towards a pH of 10. Can we look at the board for just a second? Over on the blackboard, I've gone ahead and written the reaction for the magnesium hydroxide in hydrochloric acid. We see that this is an acid-base neutralization. The acid and the base combine to make a salt, magnesium chloride, and water. I've shown not only the molecular equation, but the ionic and the net ionic equation. Now, going back to our beaker, we see that even though when we left the beaker previously it was more towards a blue hue, now we've gone back to purple. What's happened was the base, the magnesium hydroxide, neutralized the acid, and for a while it stayed sort of blue, then it goes back to the purple at about a pH of 10, and this is happening because the magnesium hydroxide in our solution once it was consumed in the reaction to neutralize the base, it took a little bit of time for more magnesium hydroxide to dissolve. It's not very soluble in water, so we let more magnesium hydroxide dissolve to come back to this shade of purple for a pH of 10. We can make this a little bit more chemical by adding some ice. When you first saw the color changes, it was a quick run through the color scale. Let's just put in some ice cubes here. We know that as we cool down a reaction, that is, as we add ice, it's going to cool down the reaction. So we're looking at a little kinetics here. And hopefully by adding the ice, we'll be able to see the color changes more clearly. All right, let the solution cool down. And we're just going to add a drop or two of acid here. And let's see how we get the color change. I want to add enough to have it go red. All right. Now because it's chilled, let's see if we have the neutralization occurring. Maybe getting a little bit more orange at this point. There's our yellow. Here comes the green. And the ice is simply slowing down this reaction so that you can see the color changes more vividly. I'm going to do this one last time. I'm going to let it stir just a little bit more, see if we can get it to go back to the green. As long as there's magnesium hydroxide here, it may take a little bit to go back to the green, more magnesium hydroxide dissolving slowly, it will return to the blue, and perhaps even to the purple, but at some point, you're going to add too much of the acid. The system's all out of whack now. So just a couple of good squirts. Do you notice something about our solution? 
What we have here now is a solution. It's no longer a colloidal suspension. And you can come back, looking at the Tyndall effect again, and where before the beam of light was being scattered, now, as we pass the beam of light through the solution, the particles are so small, they're dissolved, and truly, in solution, the beam of light passes straight through. This is a great way to show the Tyndall effect. So for one demonstration that can do it all, we talk about periodicity. We talk about types of mixtures, colloidal suspensions or a true solution. We test for that, the Tyndall effect. We can talk about acid-base neutralization reactions, uh, looking at um, indicators and pH changes as this reaction occurs. Now you might want to try to get cute and substitute another antacid for this reaction. Well, why can't we use another um, household product like Tums or Rolaids? Well, Rolaids is a calcium carbonate, and Tums is another form of a carbonate. And when you try those, you get a buffering action. That buffering action is going to give you a relatively constant pH. And you're not going to see these very vivid color changes that you do in this demonstration. It's a great one. I hope you'll use it many times in your classroom. Thank you.